particularly me, I, I don't multitask well. Yeah. And I know that, but I do have a really good ability to focus really well. Mm-hmm. So someone out there who identifies with ADHD, maybe it's easier for you. I don't know. But for me, I'm really good at focusing on just one thing at a time. Yeah. You're certainly much better than I am at multifocus. What they call do an exchange, which is at a specific point you can choose based on your team member's expertise so let's say for example you're on course and then to the right of you you see a mountain and one of your team members is a great rock climber you can choose to either stay on path or climb that mountain to see if you can get get ahead of other members conscious couples business partners and singles committed to attracting their dream partner Welcome to the Conscious Couples Podcast, where we share our life, love story, and combined relationship expertise to help you create and consistently cultivate the most magnificent, intimate relationship possible. Never again will you feel hopeless and alone in your intimate relationship challenges. Having accumulated thousands of hours coaching conscious couples and individuals all over the world, as well as starting and growing a global business together, Alan and I are here to guide you and all things relationships. Thank you again for tuning into the one place where it's not about you or me. It's about the the we. we. Conscious couples and individuals from all over the world, welcome back to the one and only Conscious Couples podcast today for episode 131. When are you your partner's primary focus? Before we jump into this episode, as always, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to Next Level Podcast Solutions. I found out this week we have 45 podcasts that we produce overall. Yes. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all that you do, audio, video, and the rest. If anyone out there wants to start, grow, or monetize a podcast, reach out to me. I'll put you in touch with Kev. And I can endorse that. They've been great with Evolve Ventures and take feedback very well. Thank you, sweetheart. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Okay. As always, ladies first, honey, what is your intention for today's episode? My intention is for couples, singles, anyone listening to this episode, really get the value that's in here. We have a couple stories. We're going to share some lessons in this and the intention that I hope they pull away from this episode with really digs into priming that skill that understands when they are and when they're not the primary focus for their partner. Because there's a lot of tension that gets built up when you think it is your primary focus or you think you are your partner's primary focus. And when that shifts, how do we navigate that? I just thought of a wedding. A lot of times at a wedding, it's been fascinating to watch where the couple is the primary focus, but yet they aren't focused on each other because they have to run around saying hi to everyone and Mm -hmm. i think that's why i've always loved the idea of a small wedding yeah and again yeah yeah so uh here's something that i want to bring everyone behind the scenes on and Mm -hmm. this is not a story that emilia knows i'm going to tell there's been an interesting challenge that emilia and i faced becoming co-hosts of a podcast Mm -hmm. and we realized probably 50 or 60 episodes in (laughs) that my primary focus (laughs) was not on our relationship uh, when we yes. were recording. I was heartbroken. <laughs> Very clearly. <laughs> you cared so deeply. But seriously, I, I really want to share this. When I'm with Emilia, most of the time, my primary focus is her. Mm-hmm. And when we first met and we didn't live together and we weren't business partners and Whenever I would go to her place or she would come to my place or we'd go on a date, she I made sure that I created this bubble of primary Emilia focus. Mm-hmm. And I made sure that I got everything done that needed to get done. And then I shut out the world yeah. to just make my whole world about her. Mm. And remember when you would come over, I'd have a cute little step up for Tucker. You were so sweet. I'd have a movie set up. I want to add food. to this story. Yeah. One of the reasons why that is from my perspective was some of the work that we had done, which you had asked me with a little note card, like what are the three things that are so important to you? And I shared with you, I, what's so important to me is that my partner prioritizes me. Like I am the number one priority. And while that might sound selfish or what have you, I've learned over my relationships that if I'm not, when we're together, the primary focus, it feels like crap. And why do I need to have a relationship if that's not a 
possibility. And this is also why you've mentioned how you prefer one-on-one interactions mm-hmm. when you connect with family. Yeah. Because the group settings, it's everyone's focus is all scattered. You yeah. don't actually connect. Absolutely. So to bring the listeners in behind the scenes here, for a while there, we realized that I was more prioritizing the listener mm-hmm. than I was Emilia. Mm-hmm. And then we realized that when I prioritize Emilia, it ends up being a better episode for the listener. So I've had to switch some things. <laughs> the up. irony. Yeah. Who knew? Paradoxical. Okay. So there's three things that we want to accomplish here today. Number one is when it when your partner is your primary focus. And so an example of that is Emilia and I last night we went to charge the Tesla, and there was this beautiful sunset. Oh, it, it was, was gorgeous. bright orangey red mm-hmm. orangey at first and then it got more and more red yeah pink and then the clouds were like i wish i could remember the type of clouds that they were i used to know all the different type of clouds but anyways they were pink orange sunset red it was stunning that was one of the brightest skies i've ever seen in my yeah, entire life so beautiful granted we were in a parking lot of a mall <laughs> so it wasn't exactly <laughs> mother nature but still we had a lot of si- a sky scape yeah a lot of uh sky real estate that we got to skyscape see yeah skyscape and so we're walking and we were listening to different songs that we love we were connecting we were being playful we were looking at the sky (laughs) and we were just completely focused on each other Mm -hmm. it was really beautiful it's awesome so that's the first scenario when your partner is your primary focus and when you are your partner's primary focus. Mm -hmm. Okay. So everyone think out there listening or watching of a time where that was the case. The second scenario is when you are the secondary focus. So Emilia and I watched a movie called Arthur the King. Yes. It's a dog movie. Dog movie. Based on a true story. Based on a true story Mm -hmm. where and it's got Mark Wahlberg in it. So inspiring. How do we explain this? Essentially it's a a true story that um it just came out by the way yeah based on a true story where a stray dog who is arthur the king is the guiding compass and helps mark Wahlberg, the main character achieve his lifelong dream which was uh receive i think it was the gold medal of the the championship of what's called adventure racing so picture um the hunger games without people trying to kill each other so you have (laughs) you have teams of a four and you can choose your team members which this is something that i told alan if i'm gonna be a life athlete like this is the thing for me it was i didn't even know it existed it was biking kayaking biking ziplining ziplining hiking um what, what do you call like climbing rock climbing rock climbing so you get to pick the team members that you have on your team up to four people and what's amazing about this is you have a a course that you're supposed to complete within like i want to say five days um and the first team that essentially crosses the finish line like it's up to you if you want to stay on course and complete that or if you want to what they call do an exchange which is at a specific point you can choose based on your team members expertise so let's say for example you're on course and then to the right of you you see a mountain and one of your team members is a great rock climber. You can choose to either stay on path or climb that mountain to see if you can get get ahead of like other a members. Sort of thing. Exactly. There's checkpoints and you yeah. can cut right through or you can stay on so the path. So cool. What yeah, with everything awesome. there's a risk, right? Yeah. So uh what if you get lost? What if you you know, it's not like they have cell phones with them. They get specific they did amount actually of have a cell phone with them. Uh, well, they get specific amount of gears and they're kind of yeah. plopped in. So anyways, it's an amazing movie, super inspiring. And it makes my training reg- regimen yeah. <laughs> seem like, um, what did we call? It, Puppy yeah, crap. Child's play. <laughs> Puppy tra- crap. Puppy yeah. crap. We, Emilia and I, we did a 5K this summer. It really put the 5K in perspective. Yeah. 3.1 miles versus their 497. Even after exercising for like over what? Two, two and a half years. Coming up on two and a half. Yeah. Right. Like every single day. It's like, yeah. Anyways, but back to the episode. Okay. So. So the point of that whole diatribe right there, I don't even know what diatribe means. I don't know why I say it. The point of all that was we were both watching the movie and we were super into it. Yeah. It was shoulder, awesome. shoulder. Costa Rica, beautiful. Ugh, gorgeous. Yeah. The nature and all that. <clears throat> and so inspiring for the athletes. So anyways, we were super into it. So we, the primary focus was the movie. Mm-hmm. The secondary focus was each other. Each other. And everyone out there watching or listening, you've watched movies or Netflix with your partner where you're both super into it Mm -hmm. and almost like, shh, don't talk. (laughs) This is, I'm into it. Alan has this thing. It's so cute. Um, Whenever we're watching a movie for the first time, 
I like can't talk without him needing to pause and go backwards. Whereas <laughs> like I can pay attention to the movie, the storyline, and I can talk during the movie. <laughs> if we've seen it before, if we've seen it, if yeah. you've seen it before, it's fine. It's fine. But if he needs to pick up on the entire. Here's my hypothesis. You need to pick up on the entire storyline and the quotes so that you have reforming content for us later <laughs> afterwards, yeah. which is so cute. But anyways, it's 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 Alan's primary focus. It was my primary focus connecting one on one in our date night was the secondary focus as a result of the movie that we chose to focus our primary focus on versus when we were on the walk it was just us it was just and us was, we were the primary focus for each other the mm -hmm. walk was secondary focus it was lovely except for when there was an eagle that flew overhead or what was it it was a it was an egret i don't even know what i would is. know that because i have family that's apparently wildly into birds yeah they do know alarmingly a lot about <laughs> birds uh, for sure okay different story, so different the now. third scenario people are thinking well, what do you mean those are the only two there is no. a third one which is switching oh yeah so when we were driving home from the sunset walk in the mall parking lot <laughs> I my mother's birthday is tomorrow. So mm -hmm. if you're listening to this on Monday, it's today, August twelfth. Happy birthday, Beth. Yeah, happy birthday, mother. Uh I actually don't know how old she is. That's embarrassing. I think sixty three, sixty four. Doesn't she's matter. in her early sixties. She's 50s. in her early early <laughs> early sixties, early sixties. So anyways, uh when we were driving home, we were actually passing my mom's place and it mm. made me think, Oh, my mom's birthday is this week. Let's set up that dinner we talked about. Yeah. So my primary focus shifted from Emilia and I to my mother. Mm -hmm. And then I was coordinating with you because obviously you're going to be there. We're actually going to dinner tomorrow at Longhorns. And, and uh, I had to switch back and forth and it was actually fairly challenging. Yeah, there was at one point, guys, this is so, so important because your relationships have definitely been in this aspect. There was one point where we had we had the music going. It was a beautiful night. So I think the windows were down maybe. And like I was just like vibing and we were like connecting. It was wonderful on her way home. You know what that means? Just kidding. Um, <laughs> and Alan goes, I need to have this music turn too off much. like there's too many inputs there's too many sensory inputs and anyone who's ever tried to get a result while the windows are down you're trying to co like coordinate with your partner on and something you were talking i was talking trying to grab your primary focus back yeah um the How music was on <laughs> yeah it, it was just a whole what what we call the pressure pressure zone for relationship breaks or relationship fractures or relationship tears to happen because we, and this is me in this instance, I wasn't aware of when his primary focus was going to be shifting back to me. And so I had asked you a question. Can I understand what's going on? Because I noticed that your prime, like your head was pointed down at the phone in your lap. And I noticed that I had thought that you had concluded with the objective, with the result, yet your your face was still looking at well, the phone. My sister had booked a lunch with her. My mom was trying to coordinate days. So yeah, yeah. everyone's been in that situation where the music's on, your mm -hmm. partner's trying to talk to you, you're trying to coordinate with your partner and with your mother. I can only imagine how that is with kids. Yeah. Oh I, my I goodness. You that's really, really challenging. And, yeah. and so anyways, that's the third scenario, which is switching. Switching focus. And when you switch focus, particularly me, I, I don't multitask well. Yeah. And I know that, but I do have a really good ability to focus really well mm -hmm. so someone out there who identifies with adhd maybe it's easier for you i don't know but for me i'm really good at focusing on just one thing at a time yeah you're certainly much better than i am at multi-focus yeah but those are the three scenarios so the first one is you are your partner's primary focus and hopefully they are yours mm. i don't know if i said that right but you know what i'm saying <laughs> the second one is you're there but neither one of you is the primary focus. Mm -hmm. And then the third one is when you're switching back and forth. And so this podcast episode, I've been focused on you. I've also been focused on what I'm trying to say. I've right. also been focused on the listener. I've also been focused on the tech audio video. Yep. And so it can be really overwhelming. It is. It can be very challenging. And so mm -hmm. do you treat your partner really well mm -hmm. when you're in the switching or do you get overwhelmed, frustrated, and then you're unkind? Hi, my name is Jason Blackstock and this is my wife, Lisa. We got connected with Alan and Amelia a few months ago through friends and we were trying to look for ways to strengthen our relationship. And right away we just noticed with Alan and Amelia how 
like how they made us feel so calm and like everything that they did with us was gentle and it felt so um, like we could let our guard down right away and that was something that allowed us to open up and and just get closer so quickly so yeah I felt it was very easy to connect with them and the, their intuition for our situation was very surprising to me um, both past and present they just knew us Mm -hmm. Yeah, they picked up on things that we didn't even think they would. They just, even in our mannerisms and the way we would look at each other at certain points in the conversation, it was just really cool to feel like they understood us. And it gave, it really gave us all the tools that we needed to work on us um, when we weren't talking directly to them. So we had um, like homework to do and things to work on and it just it really elevated our relationship in big ways and I'm I don't I think we're both really excited to keep working with Alan and Amelia because it um, you're never done working on your relationship and I just feel like that is if, if we're good then the rest of our world is good with our children and our four kids so yeah we're very grateful that we met Alan and Amelia and are looking forward to Oh, yeah. And then the last piece of this is how often are you actually each other's primary focus, particularly if you have kids, a household, jobs, businesses, you right. name it. And so that's one thing that you and I need to keep an eye on for sure. Absolutely. Because we have three businesses between the two of us. We both have teams. Three babies. We have three fur, fur, babe, fur, fur babies. babies. Uh, fur babies. <laughs> we both have, we have a dog and two cats and they, when they are our primary focus, mm -hmm. they love it. And we have a lot of parts. I got to take care of my parts. <laughs> <laughs> which is a whole nother all episode. my different personalities <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> yeah uh one of the things that i want to add on to that and i'm really glad that you mentioned that yes we have to keep an eye on that because i do believe that relationships that lose sight of this primary focus element yeah. that is so required for building developing and deepening relationships when they lose sight of that it, it's like the slow tiny boiling water analogy you don't realize how far you two have drifted apart yeah and then all of a sudden you are sitting at dinner with your partner or you're on a road trip you ask each other a question and the statement comes out i feel like i don't know you or if it doesn't come out it's sure it's hell what you're thinking and so the other piece of this too is we grow we evolve we change if you are not taking the time, so Emilia and I have certain date nights where we purposely mm. will only have each other as the primary focus. So, important. so one of the nights that we played chess is a good yeah. example. We Although call that a no stim night. No stim night. So we're not just no stimulation. Yeah. So we're not instead of no stim because I'm in bodybuilder language that means <laughs> stimulant no caffeine. <laughs> yeah. So well, it's kind of an interesting I, concept because it's it gets you going so that you're focused in a specific area, but. I see you. Yeah, and I do use caffeine to focus. Yeah. But essentially a no stim night doesn't just mean no caffeine, although it means <laughs> that too. It means no TV, no devices, that kind of thing. And what we I'm realizing in this moment, love, not to speak over you, but it, what it means it is actually that you and I are each other's primary focus. Yeah, it does. No stim. We need to do those at least once a week. We do. Probably twice a week. So yeah. we're going to work on this. Everyone out yeah. there watching or listening, work on this as well. Definitely. Because those are the nights where you reconnect and you get absolute certainty and you grow together, not apart. It's really, really important. It's really powerful. And we'll probably do an event at this at some point. I would love that. There's a comment that I would love to add to that and to a second point of how we bring this to the listeners even more and how they see this in their lives a little bit more. So one of the things that you had mentioned was growing apart and always um, evolving. And how do you navigate essentially transferring those pieces of awareness of how you're growing as an individual if you don't have that primary focus? Yeah. That's one of the things you and I call them software updates like if i've something in me has changed or something in me has evolved i always try to update your software i.e what you think you know about me so that you have the latest version of amelia 2.0 right or amelia 2.2 whatever how old are you 2.9 2.9 so that would be your version nice <clears throat> with that being said a lot of partners don't actually realize that their partner is growing and evolving consciously they might know it intuitively but they there's there's a struggle there's a gap between their communication that helps their partner understand they have been updated they have evolved they have gotten better software they've learned more they've uncovered more about themselves an example came up last night i just want to bring in an yeah. example is i used to adore sushi 
Yeah. Sushi was yeah. my favorite meal. Mm-hmm. It was my favorite food. Whenever someone would say that, for some reason, it's not sitting well lately. No. I have no idea why. So that's a software update. Yep. And I that told you had Amelia to give me last that I night. had to give her. We shifted from second, uh, secondary, pro- secondary focus to primary focus. We literally had paused the movie. Yep. And we had that. And I went and got moment. a different meal. <laughs> yeah. Basically, a couple of protein shakes and a bread muffin. Giant Asiago. Asiago. Cheese muffin. And from now, and Emilia was, what does that mean for our relationship? I'm literally she had a like, beautiful I had moment. an existential crisis. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, because you love it. Everything has been built on sushi. <laughs> that was our, that first, was our date. first date. Our first so date was a boatload of sushi. What does this mean about us? I said, sweetheart, don't even worry about it. Nothing All those sushi, sushi places have hibachi. Yeah. And I'm going to get a huge plate <laughs> of either scallops or filet mignon. Yeah. And it's going to be even better. So don't oh even goodness. worry. I have but, sushi in the fridge right now and I'm so excited to eat it. Yeah. Um, there was another comment, but close. No, that, that's, that's, I think that's a good closing. So t- just to wrap up here, when are you your p- partner's primary focus? Mm-hmm. I'm, so I'm version 3.6. She's version 2.9. However old you are. Just understand that you are updating, just like our phones, our watches, yeah. all these smart devices update. That's if you have a growth mindset. I do want to put that in there. I mean, everyone's updating anyway, aren't they're they? They're usually just growing. It's just a matter of the rate at which they're growing. So what we've learned about our listeners is that usually there's one listener that's ex- like hyper growth oriented and one partner that's maybe slow growth oriented. But even to the sushi example, even if your partner has a fixed mindset, even if your family has a fixed mindset, they're still changing. There's some there's things still, that are there's changing. There's some things that are changing. Whether that rate, be conscious or yes. unconscious is, is a different story. And yeah. the rate at that change. Maybe exactly. that's another episode Ooh, as well. I like it. So we'll see. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Anything you want to add before we go? The last thing that I would love to add is speaking to all of our neurodivergent listeners. We do have a lot of listeners and a lot of clients that have are are on that neurodivergent scale, which essentially means your brain is a little bit different than the quote unquote norm. And I even fall, you and I are neurodivergent. We've had clients in the past who, whether they have ADHD, whether they're on the autism spectrum disorder, whether they have a mental health diagnosis, prognosis, whatever this still applies. And especially one of the things that you mentioned earlier that I just want to reiterate at the end, not everyone has the same level of ability to have a primary focus. And so the, the last thing that I wanted to pull through for this episode, be our listeners neurodivergent or not, or somewhere in that spectrum, have the conversation with your partner. Are you good at primary focus? Are you usually finding yourself, your focus is scattered all at once? Because I think that that is a relevant question to even get to know your partner at a deeper level than you think you might know them. One example of that is when we do a live event, Emilia feels not only unprioritized, but not focused on because my focus is filling the event. And so I'm always on my phone. I'm constantly checking my messages, that kind of thing. And so I know that that's not relevant to the neurodivergent necessarily, but it is relevant in general. Like how overwhelmed you are is going to change the amount that you can have your partner be the primary focus. And at some point we'll do another episode on this, but when someone has big goals that they're really focused on, and back when I did fitness and bodybuilding, prior to a fitness show, it would be very hard for my partner to be my primary focus while Mm -hmm. I was scarce, not eating and focusing on posing and working out. And so goal orientation makes it very difficult to shift in and out of primary and secondary focus. Because when you are super goal oriented, Mm -hmm. not only do you have less resources, but most of your focus goes towards your goals, not towards your partner. Yeah. And we just did an episode on that. It was really talking about around, do you know, like how scarcity impacts your partner or something like that. And there's a couple episodes ago where you and it, talk- I did or yeah, it talked about you and I, it talked about the resources that if you're in a cut, if you're under pressure, oh, yeah. all that stuff. And it connects to that. The other example that I would give in closing is let's say, for example, you have a, a partner that is ADHD or has ADHD or um, is on the aut- autism spectrum disorder anywhere they fall. The way in which their focus happens to be is so different. Let's say one person gets overstimulated when they're having a family dynamic or family, something connected to family, a trigger spot, a challenge element for them. Their focus not only is going to be far more diverted, but more scattered. And what is going to stimulate them on a normal scale is probably exacerbated. 
I can relate to that because anytime before we're going to like family or stuff on the road trip that you and I usually have, I'm usually a lot more scattered. My attention is all over the place because my central nervous system is actually in more of a fight, flight, freeze, fawn state. And usually that happens. So I don't want to go deeper, although I think I just cracked open a little nut there that I think we can all pull into our relationships, understanding where your partner's attention is and not feeling entitled to that is so, so important. But also holding the fact that there needs to be some attention on you as well, because you can take that too far. Absolutely. Like when you said at the beginning of the episode that you need to feel like a priority. Right. When my attention is super scattered on goals and dreams and not on our relationship, you need to eventually bring that up as well. So Truth, but that's that's another conversation. Have you and your partners like ask, like, is that important to you? And that's, yeah. Homework for everyone. (laughs) This week... Everyone out there watching or listening, take a look at where your attention is and take a look at where your partner's attention is. Mm. And if and when your attention is actually on each other and if that's at the same time. Yeah, and how that okay. shifts the impact on your relationship, I would add. Okay, we complexified the <laughs> hell out of this, but that's okay. All right, let's rock and roll. All right, before we go, if you want help in your relationship, someone recently asked what's the difference between re- therapy uh, couples counseling, excuse me, and relationship talks coaching. I said the coaching is much more future oriented. Mm -hmm. They, they're both, they're therapeutic aspects to what we do, but it's, it's ultimately how to make sure you're growing together, not apart and how you're achieving your goals and dreams together. Mm -hmm. Solutions focused at its core is what I would say. Cool. Okay. (laughs) With that being said, if you also want to join us for our next Relationship Talks event, which is actually going to be this Thursday. So (laughs) when you hear this episode, I just got lost in your dreamy eyes. Very Um, cute. If, I'm if glad you're I was your primary focus. You were my primary focus. It wasn't even on the words that you were saying, but just you. Um, anyways, if you want to join us at our next Relationship Talks event, that's going to be this Thursday when this episode comes out, meaning August 15th. And this is going to be on Uncover and Align Your Love Languages. So speaking of growing together and not apart, love languages, understanding them at a deeper level, not just not just doing the worksheet that we have that's been su- like flying off the shelves, but understanding how that practicality can be brought into your day to day. And so Alan and I have a lot of tools and tips and things that couples not only have used in the past that have said that benefit their relationship tremendously. We're going to pull some of those into this event. We're going to really enliven. And by the time that you walk out of that event, you're going to understand what your partner's love languages are and how you can apply that in the day-to-day aka the cheat codes to grow together not apart we've all spent massive time and effort on things that didn't make a big difference imagine what your relationship could be if you focused on the things that make the biggest difference Mm -hmm. and we always say it should be almost embarrassing how much these things matter to you yes all right so thank you again as always thank you for listening we appreciate you it is not about you or me it's about The the we we'll talk to you next time bye everyone Thanks for joining us for another episode of the Conscious Couples Podcast. We love connecting with the Conscious Couples community, so please make sure you follow us on Instagram. I am at Evolve with Amelia, and Alan is a Lazarus88. Also, if you or your partner resonated with this episode, leave us a review at the link in the show notes, and please share this with someone you love and care about. Until next time, remember, it's not about you or me. It's about the we.